And the next is the sponsor talks uh, that we'll be having now. Again, thanks to all the sponsors, without uh, whom obviously this conference wouldn't be possible. Uh, so the first one I'm going to call out is the platinum sponsor, Site 247, uh, to give a talk for 10 minutes. So good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining. Uh, a quick show of hands of Zoho as a company. You all know Zoho as a company. Yeah, I, I'm sure most of you guys know that. Uh, manage engine as a brand inside Zoho, few, yeah, and Site247, no, is a product under the Zoho brand. Uh, yeah, so today's uh, agenda will be, you know, how this product came into place and uh, how observability as a platform evolved with along with what we built. And I will also touch upon monitoring as a code if time permits. Okay, so let us get uh, started. Uh, so this is a journey map of our actual product. So back in 1996 when uh, Sridhar Vembu started Zoho in mean Vembu Technologies at that time. Uh, so during the first bubble in like 2000, so there was a, our customers at that time uh, lost everything and it was you know we lost every customer overnight as such right so uh, out of the need to survive manage engine as a brand was formed okay so that's a division of uh, zoho so this is largely catered to mostly on premise uh, version of the uh, software the it management suite of products and the cloud was not even in the picture all right so then the internet happened and again in 2008, uh, another second bubble happened, right? So that's when Manage Engine as a brand, uh, you know, ha had its place, but we need to expand and yet, you know, as a company, we focused on not laying off people and uh, having our own uh, space in, in the market and so on. So then the idea of Zoho was born at that time. So when there was a crisis, so we started, you know, innovating in that space and then that's when Zoho as a brand was born. And how Site247 came into the focus was since Zoho was on the cloud, there was a large space where users from all around the globe started using Zoho. They, our uptime, the, the actual product has to be up and running always. And, you know, people from the US, the uh, European region or the APAC region, all wanted their uptime uh, and the performance of the apps to run as much as fast as possible and the end user experience to be as uh, good as possible, right? So that's when the idea of uh, hosting agents in edge locations to monitor the apps was born, okay? That's when Site247 journey back in 2006 uh, came into existence and we started our uh, journey back then. Okay, and uh, so since then we have grown. We have quickly realized that uh, synthetic monitoring, as we started out, was not only the uh, per se of uh, monitoring solutions, and the market grew. Cloud came into focus, infrastructure came into focus, and a lot of other things were added, and and so on. So today we stand at, uh, you know, we are one of the few vendors in the market with a full stack monitoring solution on the cloud, okay? So we have 16 years, we have been 16 years in the market and, uh, uh, sorry, so private since inception, we, have, we are not a uh, product that was bought by Zoho, we built from the ground up, okay? So and there is a lot of R&D and focused R&D and you no know, product market fit that was, that has happened over the course of time we have genuinely come through that phase, right? So, uh, a little bit of what, how modern stack is and why we want to, wanted to go into this market. So, at the start of the cloud journey in back when Zoho started, we have, we, uh, this is, this was prior to AWS. So, it, AWS was not even in the picture. So, Zoho had this concept of hosting everything uh, on the data center 
and giving only the apps to the end user. Okay, that, that's when uh, primarily the infrastructure as a service was uh, put into place, then it transitioned into a past service, then you know the AWS story and the Azure story uh, followed. Right? So now you have the function as a service. Right? So you have Lambda functions or the Azure functions. If you take Zoho as a company, we also have Zoho Catalyst, which is a function as a service product. And you know the uh, SaaS product. So all these layers, right? So these transition of layers that is brought into the infrastructure of modern applications. Now finally SaaS solution, even the SaaS solutions now interact with other solutions in the market. So API interaction is a lot more uh, in the recent, one of the recent events uh, that I attended, a lot of focus on API management. So how, how we interact with the API. So should the, how, uh, if, if some content in the API fails, the whole system or the whole journey is going to fail, right? So that's something that is uh, being talked about. So these, this journey, right, this, throughout this journey, we as a product grew uh, along with it, right? So wh why, why do we need, so why, what is the purpose of this? So as observability, as a concept, so everything has to be observed, right? So your metrics, your traces, and your logs need to be in one place so that when something goes wrong, you need to, you need not go into different products and then check what's happening and find out the root cause and analyze what is happening. So you will get uh, probably a flood of alerts from another system and probably not so much from, uh, you might not have the visibility in a system that you are not actually monitoring. So uh, metrics, traces and logs are the prime importance and there is a no, all, all these tied together into the security now come, becomes these DevSecOps uh, platform in the modern days. So uh, just to touch upon what modern STL C, CI, CD pipeline looks. So we have uh, the plan, uh, code, build, test, release, deploy, and uh, operate or monitor life cycle. Okay? And the concept of observability back then when we started uh, was, so we had a shift left strategy. So basically the number of signups, for example, uh, we wanted to measure the number of signups as a monitoring solution. There was a lot of, uh, you know, schedulers that are running in the back end, right? So basically we monitor every continuously all the resources that are out there, millions and millions of resources that every customers are out there. And each and every cluster of servers have scheduled tasks that are running, which picks up uh, the metrics that come in, right? So wh what is the catch here? So when the schedulers, the number of schedulers or the number of tasks that the schedulers run drop, that it means that there's a clear indication that there's something wrong somewhere, right? Either the schedulers might have restarted because due to a you know large customer coming in, so we need to, uh, capacity, have capacity planning in place, or uh, it could have been an attack from an uh, you know, external source, that could have been one of the causes, and uh, in turn, you know, there was failures, a lot of failures, schedulers did not run, metrics did not come, and customers would have complained to us saying that, hey, this monitoring, this particular cluster is not working for me, what's the problem? So these are some of the challenges that we face. So what we did was, we actually wrote code before the start of the publication and then it, you know, uh, we actually made it into the pipeline process. So this is what we did. So we actually, plan, we initially started to plan and then code it into the pipeline process and then build, test and observe in the pre-production and we observed it for a certain amount of time and then, you know, the feedback deployment and monitoring comes into focus. So this is something we did for, you know, un, uh, this is an uh, APM Insight solution that we offer. And here if you see, there is an uninstrumented block of code. So what we did was we actually instrumented that block of code with custom instrumentation. So this is something that we followed as uh, a practice inside our own product, inside Site247 itself. So that has given us a lot of benefits. 
So if you take like you know, uh, business telemetry, like number of sign-ups, automation tasks, the schedulers counts, as I said, and number of using number of uh, users ac accessing a feature. These are some of the features or tool sets that we brought in inside the product as custom instrumentation and custom metric uh, uh, features. So uh, quickly to wind up, so we also had another strategy for uh, automation deployment. So we used a lot of uh, scripts uh, prior to actually instrumenting dynamic instrumentation or auto, auto instrumentation of code. Uh, we also consolidated logs and we in, uh, eventually built that logging platform, brought that logging platform into the product itself. Um, so to, to briefly sum up, so observability brings end-to-end -end visibility to all uh, the infrastructure that you have, the applications that you have and the logs that you ingest into the system, including your custom metrics. Uh, sum of one last recommendation that I would like to leave you is, so if you say uh, uh, there are a lot of milestones that are going into the pipeline process, so you can actually mark them. So once you mark them, what will happen is you can actually compare a deployment that is pre previous, uh, previously uh, deployed and the new deployment. And you can actually measure what the performance of all these metrics that you have in place. So, so you can uh, customize your uh, dashboard and so on. This is an application performance uh, dashboard that we have. So this is something that we have as milestone markers that you can have. These are these have to be coded prior to what you have, and this is part of the build process pipeline. Yeah. So uh, finally, integrating monitoring in the same development pipeline gives you you know failure warnings that save time in running these faulty scripts during pre-deployment phases itself. Okay, so thank you guys. And uh, we, we are uh, conducting a raffle at 4 p.m. So if you guys are around, uh, join us at 4 p.m. And uh, thank you so much. Yep.